We're going to look a little bit more at multiplying and dividing fractions. And in particular, we're going to connect a little bit of our algebra to this. The first and very important idea is the relationship between fractions and division. If I write 3 over 4, it just means 3 divided by 4. And this is really important, and being able to move between the fraction way of writing things and the division way of writing things is something that you'll find very useful as you go forward. So, for example, if I have 6 over 2, it just means exactly the same as 6 divided by 2, which is 3. And we can even get quite funny in how we write things. We can talk about, say, for example, 6 over a half. Now, that is quite, looks quite difficult to work out, but if we simply rewrite it as a division, we've got 6 divided by a half, which is 6 multiplied by 2 over 1, which is equal to 12. And a quick reminder of what we're doing when we divide by a fraction. If we say 6 divided by a half, we're asking ourselves, how many half pieces are there in six holes? So, for example, if you look at the circles I've got here, what six divided by a half is, is asking me how many half circles are there in six whole circles. And hopefully it's very easy for you to see there are two half circles in every whole circle. And so in six whole circles, there will be 12 halves. The next thing we want to have a look at is how, what we need to multiply a fraction by to get 1. It's actually going to be something that's going to be very useful when we get to solving equations in algebra. So let's practice it now. Okay, I want you to pause the video and see if you can figure this one out for yourself. All right, so let's see if you manage to figure it out. Do you see that you've got to actually have multiply by 8 over 3 to get to 1? How? Just look here. If we have 3 over 8 times 8 over 3, right, we're going to have 3 times 8 over 8 times 3. So that will cancel with that, that will cancel with that, and that's how we get 1. So hopefully once you've seen that, it's fairly easy to see if you've got 2 over 5 and you want to multiply it by something to get to 1, you're going to have to multiply it by 5 over 2. And we can express this generally using algebra. A over B multiplied by what will give me 1? Well, it'll be B over A. Again, here we don't want A's and B's to be 0, otherwise we'd have division by 0, which isn't what we want. Out of interest, let's just check we've got our heads on straight. If we wanted to add something to 3 over 8 to get to 1, what would, we, what would it be? Pause the video and see if you can figure that one out. Hopefully you got it, that it is 5 over 8. Why? Because 3 over 8 plus 5 over 8 gets you to 8 over 8, and 8 over 8 is just 1. Let's do a last quick little bit with algebra. If we have a over b multiplied by a over b, remember multiplying fractions is always easy. Multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. a times a is a squared, b times b is b squared. Simple. What if we had addition? Well, addition, let's just kind of do it quickly, remind ourselves with a, a number example. If we had 2 over 3 plus 2 over 3, we'd look for a common denominator. Well, it's already common, right? And so we would just put in the common denominator, and then we'd just add the numerators, and so we'd get 4 over 3. So the algebra is going to have that same pattern, right? You're going to have the common denominator of b, and you're going to do a plus a, and a plus a is 2 lots of a, 2 times a, which we write in algebra as 2a.